Howdy there folks, I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs and this is the video review of the VentureCraft Godap 4 digital analog converter and amplifier case for the iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S. Now, if you guys remember, I tried this out at CES and I thought the idea behind it was really, really cool. And I still do, but after testing it for about two months, there are a couple things I've found in here that leaves it less to be desired. And I'm going to be covering those in this review. Now, it does run for $199 US and is not actually available for purchase in the US without a kind of trying to go out of your way to find it. You'll have to email VentureCraft in Japan and they'll set up a purchase order for you, but you can't just check out easily and nonchalantly on a web store, which is a little bit disappointing. Now, the actual case is pretty basic. Uh, down here on the bottom, you have a mini USB uh, port to charge the case and to charge the iPhone if your case is or if your iPhone is plugged into it. You also see a uh, manual gain and reset button. These are recessed because you almost never touch them, so there's no reason to really fiddle around with those. You're also going to find here on the side a uh, Unit 4 VentureCraft logo as well as a couple of LED indicators. Now, if you hold this button down, it'll tell you the battery indication, which unfortunately only gives you two options. So it's either above 50% or below 50%. So that battery indicator is not very helpful at all. The other two lights say charge and that's because uh, they illuminate when the device is charging. It lets you know if your iPhone is charging, the Godap is charging, or both are charging simultaneously. Now as we move up to the top here, we are going to find the headphone or Spadiff optical out. It does work uh, with optical, which is pretty cool if you want to hook it up to your home stereo or something of that nature. You're also going to find a gain or volume knob. Uh, it's it protrudes quite a bit from the top of the case, which I don't like. It seems a little bit um, vulnerable, if you ask me, and I've always been pretty careful of this switch, which is a, you know kind of annoying. You're also going to find the actual power switch right here. Uh, it's clear because it has an LED that shines through it. Um, you're not going to be able to see the green LED on camera, but you will see the red one when I show it to you. Uh, on the side here, you have nothing much. You do have a camera cut out so you can continue to take pictures. And on the bottom here, uh, you find a, a Godap logo, vents for your speaker and microphone, and then of course the 30 pin dock connector so that you can uh, get the music from your phone to the Godap. So what you need to do is you need to plug the phone in, and once you plug the phone in, you're ready to go. As you can see, this is really pretty thick and that's one of my biggest downsides. Not only is it really heavy, but it really adds a substantial amount of bulk to your device, which makes it uh, definitely noticeable in your pocket and borderline not pocketable, which is really kind of a big issue. It's, om it's almost even too big for a back pocket. So that's something worth noting. Now inside there is a 1580 milliamp hour battery and that is so that you can use the amplifier of course, but if you change it in this first uh, amp I mode, it will actually charge the iPhone as well. So if you move it to this top position, it will only use the battery to power the amplifier. Or if you put it in this middle, it will not only power the amplifier, but it will also charge your device. However, when it is in this mode, the iPhone continually sucks power. And I've noticed that this battery, even though it quotes uh, you know, 1580 milliamp hours, it's dead in less than like 30, 45 minutes, which is really a massive bummer. Now inside there is a Burr Brown OPA 2134 uh, class A amplifier uh, with a 16 ohm impedance. And it does a pretty nice job at powering stuff. Now it's not going to power those gain hungry headphones uh, like the Sennheiser HD50 or like the Denon AHD5000, but for our almost all IEMs and certainly a lot of over ear headphones like the AKG K701, it powers them just fine. However, I don't like the sound. The bass is essentially non-existent in the Godap 4. Uh, it has superbly thick and heavy mids, which a lot of people might like. Um, I do like a thicker mid section, but it's a little bit too overpowering on uh, the Godap 4. And additionally, the highs are incredibly sibilant and harsh, which makes them borderline uh, non-listenable. So the sound in the right headphone, like the AKG K701, sounds really, really nice. But for a lot of other headphones, it just does not sound good at all, uh, which is really a pretty big disappointing. IEMs especially will experience this. Uh, all bass is almost gone. The mids become you know, the star of the show and those highs are so harsh that they're almost painful, which really is a bit of a bummer. Now, what does remedy this a little bit is uh, what they call low quality mode. And what low quality mode allows you to do, it has an art to it. You have to stick it in this amp uh, section. You then hold this button down for like two seconds till it flashes, you move it down and you move it back up. And now we're in amp I mode and what amp or excuse me, now we're in low quality mode. And what low quality mode allows us to do is uh, it fills in the rest of the uh, 
the rest of the, the the track a little bit more nicely. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to just help uh, with low quality tracks kind of improve their sound. I don't know how the uh, technology behind it works, but it does work actually quite a bit. And it does kind of equalize that rather treble heavy uh, soundstage and sound system. So what you're also going to find in this is decent soundstage, which is basically the ambiance that it, it's like the openness of the sound. It, it doesn't really emulate a live experience. It does okay for a portable player, but it's nothing worth raving about. Uh, instrument separation is less than stellar. This was a little bit disappointing because those mids were so heavy. Uh, you know, guitar and vocals really kind of blended together. And furthermore, uh, you know, drums were kind of washed out by those overpowering sibilant crash cymbals, which was a little bit annoying. Now, not only is the sound less than stellar, but you're also going to experience lots of problems with the actual longevity of this device. It only works with the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S. So when the iPhone 5 or the next generation iPhone comes around, it's going to be pretty much outdated. It's way too big for your pocket. The knobs up here are pretty sensitive and uh, they're a little bit less to be desired in terms of durability. Uh, when it is in this powered mode, uh, the iPhone just sucks up all the battery and you'll suddenly find yourself with this really massive brick that's not even useful because the battery's dead. And really, you know, it's a good idea in concept and the price is, it's fair. $199 for this is fair, but when you can find, uh, for example, the Roku P for $170, bucks, this is a better decision in every way, shape, and form. The footprint is smaller, the sound is better, the interface uh, is a little bit nicer, um, the integration between the two devices is not necessary, and this just seems like a clear winner, especially considering it's $30 bucks cheaper. Um, you know, the main problem with this is obsoleteness and the fact that, you know, for a $200 amplifier, it just doesn't sound fantastic. It's a cool idea, but execution is a little bit less than stellar, and that's why I'm giving this a not snazzy demerit. I apologize to VentureCraft and Godap for that, but guys, back to the drawing board. You're not quite there. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment. Hopefully you enjoyed this review of the VentureCraft Godap 4 here on Snazzy Labs. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.